What is happening today guys? Pretty exciting video today. So we're putting the motor in the Severo. I wanted to get that done in the last video, but unfortunately um, Matt's RX7 took way longer than we thought it was going to. But nonetheless, today the motor is definitely going in. No promises it's gonna start or we're gonna be able to drive it because obviously you never know what sort of issues you run into. Um, I know I am missing a few things that that'll affect us too much. But anyway, got the turbo and manifold all bolted up to the motor here. So basically now I'm just gonna lift the motor up so I can attach the um, oil fittings for the return and feed lines for the turbo. I've got this uh, fitting here that's for the return that just goes into the block. And then I've got this one here, which is for the uh, oil feed. I've been running around all morning trying to get bits and pieces that I need. Um, just simple things like little thread tapes I can put on those fittings. So when you put them into the motor, obviously oil doesn't like get past them and make a mess everywhere. And uh, yeah, but we'll get into it and yeah, fingers crossed we can get, well, fingers crossed we can make some decent progress on this thing because I can't wait to have this thing going. It's been way too long. Right, so now that I've got the motor in the air, I've got better access to the oil return and feed ports while on the motor. So before, the, most of the stuff was blocked, so I couldn't actually really get to it. So now I can go through, put this thread tape around these fittings, and put them into the motor, put the feed and return lines on the turbo. Basically, the reason why I'm doing this while it's out of the, uh, out of the car, obviously, I've got real good access to get under there. It's so much easier doing it when the when it's out of the car than in the car. Work smarter, not harder. Right, so I've just gone and put it around the drain into the block. Um, now you want to make sure you're doing this the right way. I did it the wrong way the first time. Um, so you can see where it ends there, how it's sort of facing that way. It has to be going that way and not that way because obviously when you're screwing it in, if it's facing that way when you're screwing it in, you're just going to start undoing it. So if it's obviously that way, as you're screwing it in, it's gonna actually stay on it. Yeah, so now I'm gonna go do this side and then do the feed. And then we should be good to put these on the motor and get the lines on. All right, so putting the flywheel on now, I've got all the bolts here. I've gone through and put some of this Permatex Loctite on. We've got our torque wrench as well. We're gonna set them to 120 foot pound. We're just gonna tighten them all up first and then go through with the torque wrench. For anyone else doing this at home with Loctite, you don't want to put a hell of a lot on, just like a little bead sort of at the bottom. So when you start screwing it in, it will uh, go up the bolt. Tighten them up with the ratchet. Now we've got the torque wrench set to 120 foot pound. It's going to go pretty much in the star pattern. Right, so that's all the bolts torqued. Went through just sort of in a star motion. That one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. So went in, tightened them all up, and then just went through them again, just to double check, and yep, we're all good. Time to put the clutch on now. Right, so we got the clutch plate in and the pressure plate on. So trying to align it the best we can. Don't have the proper alignment tool, but she'll be right. Got them all the bolts here. Just gonna chuck them in, send it. Time to pourie Ali align the clutch because you don't have the proper tool. It works just fine, trust me. I'm an engineer. Yeah, I told is. you about that kid in the comments that said he was an engineer. Eh? Yes. <laughs> That's so good. All right. Hey, shout, hey, if you're watching this video, shout out to you. You made me laugh, genuinely. That scented. Give, it a wee, give him a wee crank. You'll have to use the socket, there's no way. One's at 12. It's these ones. Yeah, as soon as like one's got like tightness, I won't be able to move it. I got some new clutch bolts this morning and they're a different size, which is a pain in the ass. The old ones are 12s and the new ones are 13s. Ah, shit, I dropped it. Is it good? Give it a 
So we see you can't really over tighten these bolts. Turns and out you can. Joel goes and does it, and look how lucky he is. Like, <laughs> almost completely snapped, but we managed to get I it. I saved it. Look, I'm going to snap this with my fingers. It's amazing. Brilliant. I am so fucking lucky that that did not break off in there. Luckily, I've got extra bolts. Woohoo! Right. Well, Le okay. Lesson learned. Do them until they don't really want to tighten. <laughs> Holy shit, there's a long one. <laughs> yeah, mate. It's, it's like 40 cents more. Time for smoker. We got our makeshift table. Makeshift seats. Makeshift oh, seats. Shit, I shouldn't have opened my legs. <laughs> oh, go and open them again. No, no! <laughs> <laughs> Well, RX-7's coming back in the shop, that means we ain't doing the SEP again today. That'll do. Maybe go for longer, actually. So these guys are bleeding brakes on the RX-7. I've just fitted up the oil feed line, but I've got to go down to super cheap and grab like a adjustable crescent or try and find a socket that size because with the thread tape that I've put on, this is real tight and I've been trying to use this but I've only been able to get it to that before it's just fucking it so instead of fucking it more, I'm just going to go and get the right tool, sort it, get the uh, return line on and then it's pretty much ready to go in once we put the gearbox on. We've uh, got the clutch on, all sorted, all tightened up, so it's coming together. Oh, so I need to go down to Super Cheap and grab some shit so we can finish off doing the Sapphire. So I'm going to take the RX-7. First time driving a rotary or an RX-7, so this is going to be pretty cool. just saw was over the weekend on Saturday and it's now Wednesday and you've probably been wondering up to this point why the title of the video is the way it is and the reason is because the motor is not actually in the car and there's a couple reasons for that so the first reason which isn't the big issue is that I for the life of me can't figure out where the hell I've put all of the gearbox bolts I've probably got enough to just send it but I'm not RFB, believe it or not. I do want to do things properly and do things right. So I've got to go and get some more this weekend. But the biggest reason why the car isn't running, as you guys know, the motor came out of this Sapiro. And I was going to pull the loom out of this and obviously throw it in that. Sapiro to Sapiro, it's going to work. But whoever put the motor in this car has literally hardwired this loom into the headlight loom. So how they've done it, you've got your AFM plug here, which this one is a bit uh, a bit ruined, but we come back here to where the loom is, and then you follow this through here, and what do you know? It connects to the headlight loom. And if we go through, look at the loom that's um, in the car, it's actually missing the Sapiro body plugs anyway, so I would have had to have get this loom modified so the dash plugs and stuff would work in that. But anyway, that threw a massive spanner in the works with getting the car running this weekend. We thought about putting the motor back in that shell because I've got a drift day next weekend that I was trying to get the car ready for. Uh, but obviously that's not going to happen now because going to get the bolts this weekend, um, which is obviously in a couple of days, and we'll be able to get the motor, gearbox, and the whole drivetrain in the car, sort out the exhaust and the downpipe and all that crap. But I'm not going to have a loom, unfortunately. Uh, but luckily I've got a mate that's letting me drive his car for a couple laps at the drift events, which is fucking awesome. So shout out to Andrew, man. You are a saint. Look at this little bitch. <laughs> Old mate Dylan's here. Doing up a roof spoiler for the Sephiro to make it look even more RFB. RFB goodness, Dylan. RFB goodness. So what are you doing? Just measuring it up? Yeah, just measuring up and then I'll take it home, start bending her up and I'll wrap her up for you, make it look nice and shiny. Give it a nice carbon finish for you. 
So yeah, Dylan makes these little uh, roof spoilers here. He's made one on his car. So this is roughly what it's gonna turn out to look like. So that's pretty cool. Should be, uh, should be a good addition to the Sephiro. He's also doing one on the Sylvia too, so both cars are gonna be getting them. Um, if any of you guys at home want one, then hit Dylan up. You can do them for a pretty decent price. Yeah, if, if I like you enough, I'll do you a good deal. Depending so, on who you are. So what sort of cars can you do? Uh, currently I can do 180SX, I've done a Skyline, this is going to be the first Sephiro, so all going plan, I can do Sephiros, um, I'll be able to do S14s. Because you're doing one on mine. Yeah, I'm doing one on Joel's S14. Um, I've also got a couple of BMWs coming up, um, and a couple of R33s, so I'll be able to do a whole bunch of them, so see how you go. Um, I'll chuck Dylan's Instagram in the description below, so if you guys want to get him to make one up for you, hit him up and yeah, go from there.